welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last build we went anime when we built the Dominator from Psychopass. Now if you missed that build, we'll include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage so you can go over there and check out Psychopass or any of the other super cool builds we have there. But for this build, we're going to go video games. So without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. <laughs> Whoa! Check it out! Very cool. It is the makeshift knife from the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Whoa! Nice. Look at that thing. Really cool. Looks like a piece of orange steel that's been banged into the shape of a knife. It's got some cord wrapped around it, some duct tape, and uh, super easy. One piece of foam for this whole thing, and then a lot of shaping, and then adding some extra materials, and a lot of painting to make it look all banged up and scratched in distress. Um, so in this episode, making an EVA foam shadow of the Tomb Raider makeshift knife, we're going to go step by step through how to make it, seal it, paint it, and throw some other materials on it. Um, and if you want to build along with us, we have a template. So we'll include the link in the description below to our channel's storefront. So you can go grab a template if you want. If not, that's cool too. Um, just chill and watch. Um, all right, that's it. If you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, that's it. That's all the pieces to make up our makeshift knife. We got a couple little two millimeter pieces and we've got this big inch thick slab that's going to make up the bulk of our knife. All right, so we're going to go over to the bandsaw and the scroll saw. Um, you know what? Probably just the bandsaw and we'll cut this out. Okay, we're going to lower our guide down to about a half inch over our foam, lock it down. All right, check it out. Looks pretty chunky right now, but we're gonna do a lot of shaping on this thing. Um, wow, that makes up the bulk of our build right there. All right, now we're gonna poke that out. So we're gonna come in with our Forstner bits. We're gonna find the bit that's the correct size. All right, there we go. Let's go over to the drill press and poke it out. All right, there we go. Let's line it up. Okay, there we go, perfect. Now, if you noticed, we didn't just go all the way through in one straight shot. With a Forstner bit, when you're plowing out all that material, you go in a little bit and you lift it back up, and when you lift it back up, it expels all the material stuck inside. So you go down a little further, all the way out, down even a little bit further, then all the way out, and there you go, nice hole. We're gonna be banging this thing up anyway, so, um, but there you go, that's not bad. That's a pretty good thickness. Feels good, an inch. Might be a tiny bit too thick, but we'll see. All right, there you go. We are ready, man. We are ready to do some crazy shaping now. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw a center line down both sides. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little roughly where the center is. All right, there we go. There's our center mark down the top and down the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna bring this piece of our template back in. Let's cut it out.
Now this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a rough guide. There we go. Now we'll transfer that line back over. All right, there we go. We are ready to start shaping this thing out, okay? We've got our center line down the top, our center line down the bottom, and these two funky side cuts, all right? This is gonna be a lot of dremeling, a lot of shaping. Okay, now what we did was we went over to the top here and we drew these two lines kind of tapering in so that the blade gets skinnier. Now we're going to go over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut both of those out. Okay, there we go. Check it out. Nice. We did our first cut this way and then we just did our taper cut. Now our blade is really starting to shape up. All right, let's transfer our line back over. Okay, we've got our gloves on, we've got our dust mask on, we're gonna begin shaping this blade. Now you hear us say this all the time, don't be a dum-dum, do not dremel and throw dust all around in the air without your dust mask on because you do not wanna be breathing this foam dust in. All right, so we're gonna come in with our super rough bit first and we're gonna chew off a bunch of the material, then we'll come in and we'll smooth it out. Now the reason we drew these center lines is we are going to be dremeling all the way up to the peak right here on both the top and the bottom because we want it to look like a blade. All right. Now this is supposed to be hacked out by hand so it doesn't have to be perfect looking. This is supposed to be a makeshift knife. So let's go. Sweet. All right, there we go. We went from the center line up to the line we drew on the inside. So now it's starting to look like the thing's been carved out. You saw how easy that was. That was so super easy. And then we just slightly chewed off the edge all the way around so it's not square. All right, so let's just flip it around, do the same thing on this side. Pretty cool. We actually uh, probably don't even need to go in with the smooth bit. Um, so it looks all hacked up. But uh, let's try it. Pretty cool. Let's do a little bit of the inside of here. All right, that is most of our prop right there. Fits good. Looks gouged out. Rounded the inside a little bit. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna stop and we're gonna clean this mess up. Okay, now we've got these two millimeter pieces, which should be super easy. Um, all 
All right, there we go. Now we drew this little wiggly line on both pieces. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our wood burner and we're gonna mess those up. Let's check and make sure it's hot enough. Oh yeah. Okay, dust mask on because this is plastic. And when you're using a wood burner on here, you're burning plastic, so you don't want the fumes going up your nose. So I always have a fan off to the side and it blows all the fumes away from my face. But I also wear a dust mask because you don't want to be breathing it in. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna come in. Now we want this piece to look like it's been banged out or in, in, in gouged off. So we're going to come in with our wood burner. Okay, there we go. So it's really rough and nasty. And then we're going to come in. Let's get a support piece on here. We're going to come in and we're going to really use the, the tip and do little tiny messing the edge up, all right? Let's take a look. All right. Okay, see that? We're using the we're using the front edge, not just the point, we're using the edge. So we've got these gouges in there. So that's starting to look pretty banged up right there. All right? Now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to, all right, now we're going to come back in with the point. We're going to make a couple little Okay, look at that. That's really nice. The edge is totally, looks like it's been chewed off. We've got some bigger dents in here. And we did that by using the point and then this little extra collar right here. Okay, so they're very imperfect. It's a very imperfect looking damage. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we're smooshing the edge down. We want the edge down as tight as possible, but we don't want to get the squeeze out on our hands, so we're using a foam squeegee. Piece of metal on there, and it looks chewed off on both sides. Pretty cool. All right. Now we're gonna take this remaining two millimeter piece of foam right here, and we're gonna poke these little rivets out brass tube here. We're going to go right through. We're going to pop out four of these. Whoa. Alright, there we go. They shot all over the place. There's four of them right there. Okay, what we're going to do first before we stick those down is we're going to try to get the edge of these kind of mushed down a little bit. Okay, we slightly soften the edge of each one of those pieces. We're going to put a little super glue puddle down. We've got two little metal plates on there with rivets on them. The edge is all gouged off. All right, now that's going to work because right in here, when we paint it, we're gonna put, make it look all scratched. So it's gonna look like something came up and scraped this up and chewed off the bottom of that little plate. All right, there we go.
Okay, there we go. Look at that. Foam's tightened up. We are now looking good. Okay, now we're coming in with this neoprene cord. All right, we're gonna use neoprene cord and super glue. All right. We're gonna hold it while it bonds. All right, we're just gonna get it started. Now figure out where your hand is gonna go, right there, and start just past the end of your hand. Okay. And we're going to wrap it using super glue. And that's it. We're going to start right there. We're going to make hold it down over the super glue. All right, there we go. We've got it started. Now we're going to just start wrapping around here. Okay. So we're going to go off on a little bit of an angle like this and we're going to hold it down. Okay, now it's up to you how you want to wrap this thing. All right, there we go. It's getting there. We're wrapping it. Let's bring some more in. Now we cut a little wedge here on the very end of our piece. We're just going to stick it right into a where two cords are crossing so it looks like it just wraps underneath and no one will ever really see those details where you attach a piece to another piece. All right, there we go. That's not bad. Looks like cord wrapped around it. That is pretty darn cool. Loving it. Okay, here we are at the spray stand. We're gonna begin coating our makeshift knife with our Plasti Dip. And you know what we always say, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, do not spray without your respirator. Okay, there we go. Coated with several coats of Plasti Dip. That is pretty tight. And now we have gone really rough on this thing, okay? None of this was hard to do. You saw how we just kind of made up our shape and uh, used the Dremel to chew it all up. Uh, banged up our little metal brackets there so they look like they've been gouged off, which is cool. And then you saw us come with our neoprene cord and wrap it around here with super glue. And it doesn't matter if you can see some of the ends where the tube ends because when you're flashing this around, nobody's ever gonna see that. Um, so there we go, looking good. It's a little bit wet in a couple spots there, as you can tell. So we're gonna leave this alone. We're gonna let it dry and uh, then we're gonna start moving on with the paint job and uh, the duct tape on the handle. and a lot of damage. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our pumpkin patch orange. We're gonna come in, we're just gonna get this back end. And that's all. All 
All right, there we go. We're just doing a little bit of the back end, just like that. All right, now let's set it off to the side. All right, there we go. We're gonna let that end dry a little bit. Okay, now while this is drying, we're gonna attach some cord around the handle because in the pictures that we have, when the duct tape is wrapped around here, you can see that there's some cord that was wrapped around. So there's cord first, then duct tape, almost so that it can like make a little ridges for a better grip for your hand. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Small detail, but it looks, should look really cool. Stretch it right across here. to about there. Okay. All right, that doesn't matter if the, if the super glue is sloppy on here, we're gonna be wrapping it. Okay, here we go. Right down the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect. Right on our handle. We're gonna wrap it down nice and tight. Right around our cords that we wrapped. Okay, so as we go around, we'll wrap our, we'll push our duct tape down. We're picking up the cords underneath so it has that look like it's got cord wrapped underneath it to help with the grip. Very cool. We've got our duct tape wrapped around our handle. We've got the cords underneath so it has kind of like a textured grip to it. Not bad. Now we're going to come in with our silver. All right, there we go. We've got inside our little gaps there. Looking pretty good. We hit a couple little specks of silver on our cord, but we'll go in with black and we'll touch that up and you won't really see it too much. All right, now here's our medium gray. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in along the edge and we're gonna break it up a little bit just so it's not pure silver. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> now it's hard to see, it's super subtle, but when it dries, you're gonna see flat areas of gray, and then you're gonna see the shiny area. So it's gonna start to weather this thing up and make it look kind of dirty. All right, now we're gonna come back in with our pumpkin patch.
All right, there we go. Both sides are done. And like we said, we got a little bit down in here, but not fully coated. We wanted silver going right up to the edge of the cord, so it looks like the cord over time has kind of rubbed some of the paint off. So that looks good. Really rough looking. Notice how it's blotchy. We don't have a really flat coverage because we want it to look kind of weathered and aged. So we're leaving dark in the crevices. We're leaving some blotchy spots. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now we're bringing our wrought iron in. We're gonna keep going. So let's go ahead and do this whole side. Just loose and organic. We're just running along some of the edges, putting some scratch marks, filling in some areas a little bit. So now we've got three tones starting to happen on there. Okay, now we're coming in with our black. All right, there we go. We've got both of these painted black. Okay, we threw on a little bit of painter's tape here just to protect our blade. We're gonna come in with our wrought iron, okay? You've seen us do this a lot of times. When we've got something black, we come in with our wrought iron, which is a really dark gray, has a little bit of blue in it, and it's matte finish too, so it helps us get like a really cool oxidized look. Okay, there we go. See how we just broke up the black with the wrought iron? Look at that. That's just enough to give it. Okay, now we're coming in with our brushed antique gold. Okay, there we go. Multiple coats of our gold for our rivets. Okay, now we're gonna make a tiny little mud wash, just a tiny one. So we're going to come in with some brown and we're going to come in with a little bit of black, tiny bit of water. Okay, now we drained all the water out of it. So it's muddy, but it's not super wet. All right, we're going to get a couple paper towels. You've seen it. All right, gotta leave it. And now you've seen us do this before too, where we come in and we just pick a few spots to darken it up. Right there, let's do right here. Perfect. All right, now back in with our silver. Just like all along this edge here where view Okay, we're gonna come in with our acid brush and a paper towel, and we're gonna get most of it off. And then we're gonna come in and we're going to swipe it. All 
All right, check that out, man. That thing is aged nicely, and you saw how easy that was. We've done this technique before where we, move, we use multiple tones, all right? So we came in for the blade, and we did three tones on the blade. We painted it silver. We came in with our medium gray to start dappling the, the silver and breaking it up a little bit, and then we came in with the dark raw iron. So once you get those three tones on there, it really starts to have a nice aged weathered sort of a look and uh, then we came in and just brushed a lot of the rest of the stuff on brushed all the orange on brushed our black plates and our gold screws on which was super easy then we came in and started the weathering process which is really simple but really effective and we started with the mud wash some brown and black slopped it on dapped it off with some paper towel darkened a few spots so it has that nice dirty grimy sort of a look and then we came in with our silver on our brush and we did a lot of these thick edges and these little torn pieces and stuff like that hit along the edge of our metal just to give it that scratched look and then we came in with the acid brush which is so effective where we wipe off the paint the silver paint on a piece of paper towel so it's dry brush and then we came in and we streaked look at these streaks on here that's so nice right here and up on these metal plates, that streaking is really, really cool looking. And this little bit right along the edge, really realistic looking. And then we came in and started dry brushing these streaks on the blade, which looks really cool. So this definitely looks like it's hit off of something and scraped and tore the metal off, which is super cool. Um, look at that thing, man. And again, this is not... Not super skilled man you can just kind of follow those steps and it looks pretty weathered and scratched up man that's a banged up piece of metal that someone turned into a knife um all right sweet i better stop yapping um with that last detail coming in with our acid brush and putting these really nice silver streaks on there silver scratch marks uh that brings our shadow of the tomb raider makeshift knife build to a close. There was one piece of foam shaped with the Dremel, cut sideways and then cut for the taper and then we shaped it. Really, really easy. Wrapped our cord, wrapped our duct tape and then the paint job is the real hero on this piece. Um, we came in and we did three tones of Silver. We did the silver, the medium gray, and the raw iron around the edge to give it that dappled look with all the color change in it. And then we just brushed on the orange, brushed on the little black plates with the gold rivets, and then we came in and mud washed it to get it all dirty looking, and then came in with silver. Used the brush to do these big chipped, scratched areas, then came in with the acid brush and uh, did the dry brush scraping on here that looks really, really sweet. Um, and that was it. Really easy, really fun, and really cool makeshift knife. All right, there you go. That concludes making an EVA foam Shadow of the Tomb Raider makeshift knife. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.